welcome to Willow Hill and everyone joining us for worship today. We are so blessed to worship with you. My name is Lee Hager and I'm the director of online ministries. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you today as we continue in our sermon series, Dreamer, the story of Joseph. This week, Pastor Nicole will be sharing the message, Hope Unchained. Throughout the course of the worship service, please feel free to like, comment, let us know what you're thinking. We would love to hear from you and engage with you in that way. And we encourage you to fill out the digital connection card, which is linked in the video's description. It gives us a chance to get to know who's worshiping alongside us. And if you have any prayer requests you'd like to submit, you can put them in through there. And that way the staff can go ahead and pray alongside you. If you'd like to get to know a little bit more about Willow Hill, you can check out our website, willowhill.org, or you can find us on social media through Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. At this time, we encourage you to open your hearts and meditate on the words of our opening song. Worship his holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawning It's time to sing song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes my soul oh my soul worship is old for my heart to find Yes, Lord, oh, Lord, oh my soul oh, oh, my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh, my soul I'll worship You Oh, 
worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. As we enter into our time of prayer, I'd invite you to take a deep breath, invite the presence of God into your heart. Uh, I will just give us a few moments to do that, and I'll pray a prayer for us, and at the end we can join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Let us go to God. O oh God, who was, and who is, and who will be, may your name be praised among us, May your mercies be shouted and your grace be proclaimed. For you alone, O God, are worthy of our praise. As we worship you today, we have many things that are on our minds. Loved ones who are ill, financial worries, things that must get home at work, at home, at school. Help us to lay down these concerns at your feet. Help us to trust in you in each of these situations and be with us in this week ahead. When our worship time is finished, help us to take your light of hope into this dark world. Help us to shine it into the forgotten places. Help us to reach out to those who need to hear of your love the most. Let us not be afraid to do these things Give us courage to follow you, O oh God. We ask all of these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi friends, it's time for small talk. I brought a couple of balls with me today to talk to you about something. You know what this is? That's right, it's a basketball, right? This one might be a little trickier. This one is, it's a play one, it's not a real one, but it has three holes in the side and it's hard. That's right, that's a bowling ball, okay? So I'm gonna ask you a question. What do you think would happen if I drop this basketball on the ground hard? What is it going to do? Is it going to stay there on the ground? No, you're right. It's going to bounce back up, right? The basketball, when I drop it to the ground, it will bounce back up. The bowling ball, on the other hand, what happens if I drop this bowling ball I better not drop it on my toe, right? Because a bowling ball is usually heavy. Now this one's plastic, so it's not so much. But if I dropped a bowling ball on the ground, is it going to bounce back up? It's not, right? Because it's going to be heavy and doesn't have the right rubber and air inside to make it bounce. So what does that have to do with the Bible, right? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think that you would rather be a basketball or a bowling ball? And then what do you think God would want you to be like? Would God want you to be like the basketball that bounces back up or the bowling ball that stays on the ground? All right, let's, let's see. If the basketball bounces back up, that could be like when the basketball's dropped. It could be like us when we have, we're going through tough times. Maybe we're feeling really alone or sad or scared or angry. 
any time that things are happening like that, when we feel really alone, when things don't feel good, we're gonna say that's like dropping one of these balls on the ground, okay? So you have a hard time, something bad is happening, it's like you get dropped on the ground. Do you think God wants us to stay down on the ground, like the bowling ball, stay down there, stay sad, stay angry, um, stop doing good things, stop thinking about God? Or do you think God wants us to be like a basketball and bounce back up? Do you think God wants us when times are bad and we drop down, does God want us to stay down there on the ground, stay sad, stay angry, just keep feeling alone and give up hope, quit doing good things? Or would God want us to bounce back by remembering that God loves us and by remembering all the good things that God has for us to do and knowing that God is going to be there with us Help us get through whatever that bad time is and keep making the right choices. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to learn about Joseph again today. We've been hearing about Joseph and Joseph has been through some bad times. His brothers were jealous and didn't like him and sold him into slavery. And Joseph could have stayed down, but he kept doing the right thing. Then Joseph was accused of doing something that he didn't do and put in prison. But we're going to learn today in today's story that even though he was knocked down again, dropped down, Joseph didn't stay down like the bowling ball. Joseph bounced back by having hope that God was going to continue working through him and God was going to continue to help him. So the next time you have a hard time, I want you to remember to try to be like a basketball Remember that we're filled with God's love and with hope that God will always be with us so that we can bounce back by doing the right thing and continuing to treat people well the way God wants us to. Let's put our hands together and say our sentence prayer. Dear God, thank you for being with us even during tough times. Please help us Bounce back like a basketball by remembering your love and never giving up hope. Amen. See you next time. One of my ongoing prayers for our congregation is that we will continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Over the past couple of months, we've been collecting items for a care package that we uh, intended to give to our friends at Snyder Village, the residents there. We put those care packages together on Christmas Eve, and the past week or so, we've been delivering them. And it has been wonderful to hear how well they've been received, that these uh, care packages are bringing joy and hope to these uh, residents at the retirement village. And I am so grateful for your generosity for all the ways that you have helped us to be those hands and feet of Christ. Uh, that little bit of hope goes a long way and we are sharing the goodness of God with others. So I wanna thank you for all the ways that you help us to share God's love in the world. Your generosity, your gifts to our congregation at Willow Hill are making a difference. And so you can give online by following a link in the description of this video you can also go to our website, willowhill.org, or you can always drop a check in the mail or by the church office. However you choose to give, know that you are helping to bring the goodness of God in tangible ways to our community and around the world. Thank you. Yeah.
Would you join me in praying? Oh God, we are grateful to be gathered together wherever we are and to know that your spirit is with us. We pray that you would open our ears that we might hear your still small voice. Speak to us, God. We are listening. Amen. Well, a farmer was wrongfully accused of robbery and was sent to prison. His wife did all that she could to take care of the farm in his absence, but she quickly became overwhelmed with all the work that needed to be done. So she wrote to her husband in prison and said, Honey, I'm sorry, I just don't think I have the energy or the strength to dig up the ground to plant crops this year. I just don't know what to do. A couple of days later, she received a letter from her husband. It read, no matter what you do, do not dig up the field. That's where I buried the money that I stole. Now, she was confused by this because she knew he was innocent. The very next morning, the FBI and the police arrived and they dug up the entire field. But of course, they found nothing. They apologized to the woman and left. That same day, the woman received a second letter from her husband. It's the best I could do under the circumstances. You're welcome. Well, today we are going to be talking about a different farmer who also made the most of his circumstances. His name is Joseph, and he grew up on a farm tending sheep. As a teenager, he made the mistake of sharing a couple of unflattering dreams about his brothers with his brothers. Bad idea. His brothers became so jealous that they sold Joseph into slavery, convinced their father that he had died, and poor Joseph ended up as a slave in Egypt. He was sold to a man named Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's army, and something pretty incredible happened to Joseph. He worked his way up to becoming the head of Potiphar's household. He was in charge of everything. But then things went awry for Joseph. You see, he caught the eye of Potiphar's wife. She tried to seduce Joseph, and when that didn't work, she framed him for something that he didn't do. And that's where we're going to pick up today's story. This is Genesis chapter 39 verse 20. So he, Potiphar, took Joseph and threw him into prison where the king's prisoners were held and there he remained. Poor Joseph. Everything is going great and bam! He finds himself with an indefinite prison sentence. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us how long Joseph was in prison. It just says, and there he remained. Those little words could represent weeks, months, or even years. We just don't know. I kind of wonder what it was like for Joseph to be thrown into prison with no light at the end of that tunnel. For all he knew, this was a life sentence. They had left him there to rot. I imagine Joseph was feeling lonely isolated, filled with fear and hopelessness. What a scary, uncertain circumstance to find yourself in. But God isn't through with Joseph yet. In the midst of Joseph's suffering, God is with Joseph. God is still at work. God is still being faithful. But I wonder, was Joseph aware that God was moving? Or did he feel abandoned and alone? Because there are times in our lives where we feel that way, lonely, isolated, filled with fear and hopelessness. We might feel like we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel that we are in. We just feel like we're surrounded with darkness, like we're chained up in a prison of our own suffering. Maybe you felt that way in your past. Maybe you feel that way right this very moment. Maybe it's something that you will endure in the future. We all have difficult times in our lives that we have to move through. So the question becomes, when we find ourselves in those situations, those metaphorical prison sentences in our lives where we feel emotionally or spiritually chained up, how do we unchain hope? How do we move from focusing on the darkness to focusing on the faithfulness of God, 
even in the darkest of times. We might have times in our lives where we are imprisoned by hopelessness. But in those situations, I think we can learn from Joseph. When Joseph was at one of the lowest points in his life, he teaches us how we can unchain hope in those difficult seasons. And so today, we're going to look at three ways that Joseph teaches us how to unchain hope in our lives. Let's take a look at what happens next in Joseph's story. This is Genesis 39, verses 21b through 23. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. And the warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. There's that phrase again. We've seen it before. The Lord was with Joseph. God continues to be faithful to Joseph. And because of that faithfulness, Joseph is able to do something pretty incredible again. (laughs) Scripture tells us that the jail warden didn't worry about anything because Joseph was in charge of everything and he took care of it. You know, Joseph didn't sit back and, and, and wallow because he was wrongfully accused and thrown in jail. Instead, he made the most of the situation he was in. And this is the first way that we can work to unchain hope in our lives when we find ourselves in those difficult seasons. We can make the most of the situation that we are in. I know it sounds simplistic, but I really think it's true. Our mindset, our attitude affects so much. Joseph kept finding himself in these awful situations. He kept getting beat down in life. And he certainly could have sat in prison and felt sorry for himself. And he would have been completely justified in doing so. But instead, he chooses to make the most out of the situation that he's in. I think this can be encapsulated in a quote from Abraham Lincoln. And just so you know, anytime an Illinoisan pastor quotes Abraham Lincoln in a sermon, he or she gets extra bonus points. It's in the rules. So here's what good old Abe has to say. Folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. Isn't that so true? Folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. And if I had to guess, I bet that Joseph did just that when he found himself in jail. He chooses to be okay. I could just imagine him sitting in prison in chains, looking around and saying, well, This is unfortunate, but I'm here. I might as well make the most of it. It's exactly what he does. He makes the most of it. He chooses to make the most of it. So that's one thing we can do to unchain hope in our lives, to make the most of the situation in which we find ourselves. Now, before I go on, I need to give a little bit of a disclaimer. I want to say that it's okay to be not okay. Sometimes life is just tough. We go through tragic situations. We lose loved ones. We get a devastating health diagnosis. A relationship ends. Any of those things can happen. And it just feels like our world is crumbling around us. And when that happens, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be not okay. I know there are those of us who are suffering right now through awful circumstances. So please hear me. When I say you're only as happy as you choose to be, I am not saying, well, you're suffering. It's just a part of God's plan like Joseph, so just be happy about it. I am not saying that. That's horrible theology, actually. Dealing with tragedy, dealing with grief is an entirely different topic than what we're tackling today. Instead, what I am saying is that in our overall life's journey, the ups and downs of life, there are those stretches where it seems like nothing goes as planned. And we can feel like we're chained down, like we're shackled with bad luck. You know, and those things just pile on top of another and another and another, and we just feel the weight of all of us, of all of those situations on us. It's in those situations that we can change our mindset And if we do that, we can experience our circumstances differently. 
If we choose to look at the positive rather than the negative, it can make a big difference in our lives. Joseph chooses to take a bad situation and make the best of it. He allowed his attitude to be focused on serving others, of taking care of others who were in prison alongside him. And I'm certain that his attitude made a difference in his situation. We are only as happy as we choose to be. And we can always choose to nurture joy in our hearts. I saw this put into practice in a very real way a few years ago when I was in Liberia. At the time, it had been like 13, 14 years since the Liberian uh, Civil War had taken place. And it was a horrific war with atrocities that we just can't even wrap our minds around. Children were being brainwashed into killing their parents and joining the rebel army. It was, it was horrific. It was horrific. And since it had been not that long since the war had kind of come to conclusion, everyone we met when we were in Liberia had a story to share with us. Stories that made us weep when they told us what they had lived through. One of the people that shared his stories with us was a man named Sam. Sam was, a, was pretty young when the rebel army was moving around. And as I mentioned earlier, they were specifically targeting kids, and Sam knew this. So when the rebel army invaded his village, uh, he hid in, a, in rolled up bedding for days in order to stay safe. Now, I cannot imagine a little kid having to hide in order to save themselves from armed gunmen who are coming in and shooting anyone who weren't complying with their demands. <laughs> Just, it's devastating to even think about. All these years later, Sam has grown up and become a United Methodist pastor in the Liberian Annual Conference. When I met with him and sat down and talked about this experience, I asked him how he could be so filled with joy after all the evil that he had seen and after all that he had lost in his life and, and people, loved ones that he had lost. And he said this to me. He said, because God is still good. And God is all we have. Wow. The amazing thing is that Sam is just one of many, many people with the same attitude. These people had experienced such darkness, so much pain. But overall, they're the most joy-filled people I have ever met in my life. Constantly singing praises to God and let me tell you, Liberians can sing, and they sing in four-part harmony wherever they go. It's, it is incredible. Now, I don't think that Sam and some of my other Liberian friends were able to choose the mindset of joy and happiness right after all of this tragic loss. I think it took time. I think it took healing. I think it took God continuing to be faithful to them in the midst of their tragic circumstances. But eventually, they were able to have this incredible mind shift, mindset shift. They were able to acknowledge the goodness of God, to see his unwavering faithfulness and his love, even in the darkest times in their life. And from there, they were able to make the most out of their situations. In our story today, Joseph chooses to make the most of his situation. He wins the favor of the warden, and eventually, Scripture tells us, he's put in charge of everything in the prison, which is pretty crazy. So the second thing that we can do to unchain hope is to do just what Joseph did. In other words, to do what you can with all you have wherever you are. Pretty wise words. Now, I didn't come up with that myself, that's from another president, Theodore Roosevelt. Do what you can with all you have wherever you are. That's exactly what Joseph did. He didn't wallow in self-pity or sorrow. He could have just gone about his days and given up, but that's not Joseph, right? He works his way back to the top, proves himself worthy, and earns a high standing in the prison, doing what he could with what he had, where he was. And it worked. 
Because through his diligence, and this is the important part, through his diligence, an opportunity presented itself that would change the course of his future. So let's take a look at what happens next. This is Genesis chapter 40, verses 1 through 4. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended their royal master. Pharaoh became angry with these two officials, and he put them in prison where Joseph was, in the palace of the captain of the guard. They remained in prison for quite some time, and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, who looked after them. Now, had Joseph not made the most of the situation he found himself in, had he not changed his attitude, had he not gotten to work doing the best with what he had, with uh, where he was, who knows if he ever would have met these two people, let alone be put in charge of them. But right there, in his prison cell, a door opens for Joseph, a big opportunity that's going to change everything for him. Let's see what happens next. This is Genesis 40, verses 5 and following. While they were in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? They asked him. And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. Go ahead and tell me your dreams. And this is going to give us a third way to unchain hope in the midst of darkness. And that is to continue to live out your purpose. Continue to live out your purpose. Now the other two points that we've made have had a presidential quote. And so I thought this one needed one as well. I strive for consistency. So here we go. A quote from President Ronald Reagan. There's purpose and worth to each and every life. How incredibly true, right? We each have purpose and we each have worth. And it's our job to live out our purpose in the world. So Joseph, we find, is not only a dreamer, but he's also been given the gift of interpreting dreams. Or as he puts it, being able to tell others how God interprets their dreams. This was his purpose and he was living it out. Let me tell you what happens next in a little bit of a paraphrase. So the cupbearer shares his dream with Joseph. He, in his dream, he was making some wine. He pours the wine into the cup and he gives the cup to the Pharaoh. Joseph interprets his dream and tells the cupbearer, good news. The Pharaoh is going to get you out of here. You're going to be released from jail and you're going to go on to serve the Pharaoh. So hearing this good news that the cupbearer got, the baker tells Joseph his dream. He says that he was carrying a basket of bread, but birds came and ate the bread before Pharaoh could get any. And Joseph interprets this dream. Bad news, bro. Uh, you're going to be impaled, and birds are going to come and peck away at your flesh. Bummer. <laughs> and sure enough, both of these dreams come true. The cupbearer gets out, he goes on to serve Pharaoh, and the baker, well, let's just say we don't have to worry about him anymore. Now, Joseph could have told these guys, look, dreams got me sold into slavery, which led to me being thrown into here. I am not interpreting your dreams. No, thank you. I'm through with dreams. But he doesn't. He looks for ways to live out his purpose. And even in the midst of his prison sentence, he is using his God-given gifts. He interprets these dreams and I'm not going to spoil the rest of the story for you, but eventually it's going to change his situation drastically. But you'll have to come back next week for that. Joseph interprets these dreams because it's what God gave him the ability to do. He knows what he's been called to do. He's living out his purpose. So as you're going through life and find yourself in those dark seasons, I encourage you to do what Joseph has done. To use your gifts that God has given you to find a way to fulfill your purpose. Because like Joseph, who knows where it might lead you. Now I love this part of Joseph's story because it is such a reminder of God's faithfulness. That God remained faithful to Joseph even in one of the darkest points in his life. In fact, Genesis 39, 21 says this, 
But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his, un, his faithful love. But the Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed him his faithful love. God was faithful to Joseph. And God is faithful to us. God is with us. And the greatest way to unchain hope in the midst of the prison sentences of our life is to hold on to that message with everything you got. To know that God seeks to be where you are. That his faithful love is still at work no matter how dark your days are. Maybe you find yourself where Joseph is at this point in the story, feeling like you're chained up, unable to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And if that's true, I want to encourage you to do what Joseph did to unchain hope in your life. So may we make the most of the situation we find ourselves in. Choose to change our mindset. May we do what we can with what we have wherever we are. And may we seek to fulfill our purpose. And above all, may we know that there is a God who wants to walk with us through those dark times and who will remain with us even when we reach the other side, who, like he did for Joseph, will show us his unfailing love. Would you pray with me, please? Oh God, we are grateful for your unfailing love. We are grateful that in the darkest hours of our lives, you are faithful to us. Even if we can't feel it, even if we can't see it, we can know that you are with us. We see that in the story of Joseph, and we know that that is the same that happens in our life, that you are faithful to us. God, we are grateful for that. Help us to unchain hope in our lives so that we don't have to live in despair. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, this worship service has ended, but your life in Christ goes on and on. May your peace be so real and your joy so evident that all who see you come to know God. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. The Senior High Youth Group is selling Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizzas for Super Bowl Sunday as a fundraiser for the Senior High Mission Trip Fund. Orders may be placed online through the sign-up page of our website. Paper order forms are also available at the information desk in the church lobby. The last day to order will be Sunday, February 5th. Pizzas will be available for pickup on Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th from 10 to noon. Payment via cash or check is due at pickup. January is a five Sunday month, so we are asking for a special push to fill the donation table in the church entranceway to support the Spring Bay and Open Arms food pantries. Most needed items include soup, crackers, canned fruit and vegetables, laundry detergent, toilet paper, and facial tissues. Sunday, February 5th will be a special combined service at 10 a.m. as we enjoy Youth Sunday, where our junior and senior high youth will lead the service that morning. For prayer concerns, contact Gina Hewlett. For pastoral care needs, please contact Pastor Nicole Cox. Staff contact information can be found on our website. If you enjoyed today's worship service, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on our latest videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.